بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, welcome in the this meeting of Egyptian Society of Nephrology and Transplantation CME meeting online meetings as usual in Wednesday 9 p.m. أحب أقول لحضراتكم كل سنة حضراتكم طيبين ومناسبة عيد الأضحى إن شاء الله الأسبوع الجاي ويعودوا عليكم وعلينا جميعا بخير إن شاء الله. Today we will speak about renal biopsy from one of the experts in this field, معتز فتحي, who has established himself as one of international interventional nephrologists in the last years, and we are all proud of him. For his work in this field and establishing this field, uh, our moderator today is Professor uh, Gamal Saadi, who is well known. Professor Gamal Saadi is the past president of Egyptian Society of Nephrology. Uh, he is the current president of African Society of uh, Transplantation and Egyptian Society of Transplantation. He is also the president of Stem Cell Chapter Chair and the past president of IFKF. Uh, President, uh, Professor Saadi, uh, from this uh, introduction, and we all know that uh, he's interested mainly in organ transplantation. So why Professor Gamal Saadi to be our moderator today? Uh, he is my professor, and through all my work, and since starting as a junior resident and passing all my career work, and we all know Professor Saadi likes and loves to do all his renal biopsies by his uh, hands in himself. And we refer all the difficult biopsies to Professor Saad. And all interventional nephrology maneuvers, such as CVP, renal, difficult renal biopsies, Professor Saadi is well known to do it perfectly by his hands and uh, to learn and teach us how to do. And he's interested in this field specifically in addition to his well-known interest in uh, organ and renal transplantation. So uh, I am to welcome Professor Saadi to be our moderator and thank him to agree to be our moderator today and leave the floor to him to introduce Mu uh, Professor Mu'taz and lead this meeting. Please, Professor Saadi, start. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear can you. you hear me? Yes, yes, okay. please start. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Let me welcome all of you to the Shaisha uh, Kidney Academy of the Egyptian Society of Nephrology and Transplantation uh, with uh, all the great memories of uh, the initiation and uh, best practice we all encountered under the leadership of our late uh, Professor uh, Hussein Shaisha. And we would like to thank Professor Yasser Abd Hamid for uh, his uh, indulgence and uh, time and effort he's giving to maintain uh, these activities. كل سنة وحضراتكم طيبين بمناسبة الأيام المفترجة والعيد الأضحى القادم إن شاء الله. ندعو لكم جميعا بالتوفيق والمحبة وربنا يجعلها أيام سعيدة ويعودها علينا جميعا بالخير. Let me welcome all of you and uh, actually uh, the topic of today is very uh, interesting and since the early uh, days when I was a resident I used to be uh, taught by my uh, dear late professor uh, uh, professor Hussein al uh, rahmatullah Ali how to perform the kidney biopsies. Uh, we used uh, to first to ask for a, a plain uh, x-ray uh, of the abdomen with a nephrographic phase. Uh, and I used to stand beside Professor Al Husseini and we used to uh, delineate by a, a ruler the distances from the spine and we can measure the uh, longitudinal distance and the transverse distance and we mark this on the patient and then uh, uh, per, uh, proceed with the performance of the, uh, the biopsy. We had a lot of successes, but we had also some failures and difficulties because of the primitive ways of delineation of uh, the kidney uh, uh, site. Uh, we occasionally uh, got 
abnormal tissues. Sometimes, very rarely, we can get a suprarenal rather than a lower pole of the kidney. Sometimes we, uh, we get a splenic uh, puncture. Occasionally, we get an intestinal uh, biopsy. Uh, and we have rare occasions when we could get the pathology of the patient uh, from these uh, extra renal tissues, uh, which uh, came by a mishap. Uh, with the progresses we encountered in the uh, field of technology, we are now uh, reaching uh, better uh, qualities of delineation and uh, uh, detection of the kidney site and size and performance of the biopsy uh, under uh, guidance of the uh, probably the uh, ultrasonography, also the uh, CT and uh, so on. We are going to uh, hear from uh, Professor Mu'taz Fathi, one of the, um, uh, the uh, very scientific and very uh, expert uh, uh, professors in the field of uh, uh, ultrasonography and the detection of the kidneys and performance of uh, the kidney uh, biopsies, uh, as well as the progress we are uh, introducing into the uh, intelligence, uh, which we can benefit from the uh, 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 technologies available. Uh, Professor Mu'taz Fathi is uh, very uh, well dedicated to the education of his colleagues, his uh, students, and uh, gives all assistance whenever uh, required and asked from him. Uh, and I thank him for all the assistance and uh, leadership in that uh, field. Uh, Mu'taz is, is a very close uh, colleague to, my, to myself. And without any further delay, please proceed, uh, Professor Mu'taz, with the renal biopsy in expert hands. Go ahead, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rabbi shahli sadri wa asli amni wa ahli al-aqdata min lisani afqa wa qawli. Kul sana wa alaikum ba alfi khair wa sahha wa sa'ada. Munazbet ayyamz al-hajja wa eid al-adha al-mubarak. Thanks, Dr. Jamal, my dear professor and my dear mentor. Uh, I, he, he received me when I was a student, 2004, when I was a nephrology resident, 2004, I was in his unit. Uh, Dr. Gamal was, uh, and thanks for uh, this uh, chance, Dr. Ras Abdul Hamid, and all uh, the committee of the Egyptian Society of Nephrology in uh, this scientific uh, activities to share in the Sharish Akidni Academy. Thanks for this uh, very, very, very special uh, uh, chance. Uh, Dr. Gamal Saadi, uh, when he was uh, renewing the unit, uh, which is called the uh, dialysis unit, uh, dialysa, what is it, dialysa? Uh, he insisted on uh, putting, uh, 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 renewing a room, which is called ultrasound room. This is the first time I uh, noticed that we can uh, use, uh, we, we can use the ultrasound in our uh, daily practice. Uh, and he uh, asked me he is going to go to bring a machine and there will be an ultrasound room beside the dialysis rooms and beside uh, the labs and the pathology uh, uh, section there will be an ultrasound section. this is the first part uh, from this point i started to uh, uh, to think uh, and to, to take a courses and uh, in the git uh, section of course we are we are, in the forest we're not uh, 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 we we're not having this skills, but these skills, I, uh, I learned it outside the nephrology in the GIT and the, the radiology. Uh, then they added my, the, the doctor to my experience, then started the intervention um, uh, practice. Uh, after uh, uh, watching the American Society of Diagnostic and Intervention Nephrology are uh, doing much, so much effort and so much uh, uh, scientific meetings. Uh, today, our uh, topic will be renal uh, biopsy in expert hands. Uh, some uh, situations will, will uh, describe some situations. I will uh, uh, show you some uh, uh, biopsies that I reject by myself. I will show you some uh, how, how, we, how we proceed in the COVID era in the biopsies, uh, how much complications, how many debates we are, the, we are falling in a big, big, big debate uh, in the management of uh, complications renal biopsy. Uh, regarding urologists, regarding nephrologists and interventional radiology, and let's start. Renal biopsy in the expert hands. Uh, it's now getting easier by this uh, big machine, which is called a conventional machine. All this machine is summarized 
in a small handheld wireless uh, uh, machine. And my uh, and have, uh, my research, my last research, what was accepted in the last era editor 2022, and uh, it was a big chance that presented by Dr. Gamal was uh, using this uh, wireless machine in among the hemodialysis patients regarding uh, parathyroid examination, uh, pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, uh, abdominal ultrasound, chest ultrasound, detection of B lines. Uh, by this small machine, it can do a very, very uh, a, a large number of patients in a very uh, small, uh, in a very uh, small time. Just uh, we need uh, to learn in uh, in few weeks. Then we can uh, start to uh, to work in our diocese units. It adds it adds many efforts. It adds many results. And this is Australian uh, diagnostic intervention in front section. Uh, trying to imitate the American site of diagnostic intervention for section to be uh, this is uh, the start of our uh, work because if every dialysis unit in every uh, nephrology section we need a unit like this uh, having an ultrasound machine uh, educa audio visual education setup uh, uh, biopsy uh, uh, for, for uh, needs for biopsy guns for biopsy uh, uh, double human accesses uh, uh, this infection control uh, team. Uh, we are having a small, a small unit, but uh, we are hoping to, this unit to be uh, a point to to start with in, in other uh, universities and other uh, institutions. Uh, and this is a great honor to to be a part of Royal Princeton Hospital uh, biopsy course uh, sharing. I was invited by Dr. Ayman Ahmed, uh, but unfortunately, we two years ago uh, this course is stopped. Due to COVID, uh, but it's now it's it will uh, it will turn back this December, in two and three December. It turn back. It, it takes place in the Royal Prince Hospital, like Shire Teaching Academy. Uh, we are having a, a module. Uh, uh, you, you can see this module: uh, ultrasound and biopsies and the needles. And uh, uh, anyone in need can take place in this uh, course. And uh, whenever there is updates about this course, we will update uh, you. Uh, the summary of the intervention nephrology section or activities is to be a clinician with uh, oceanographic imaging uh, facilities uh, to clinically correlate the patient with the image and the clinical picture uh, to, to, the, to have a diagnostic jump in the patient and follow up easily by ultrasound and capable of doing emergency and elective interference. These are the views of uh, intervention. Percutaneous CM biopsy is an irreplaceable tool in the clinical practice of nephrologists to determine, determine diagnosis, prognosis, treatment of several kidney disease via ultrasound or CT guided. The risk of complications in patients may be reduced by ultrasound, laparoscopic, or transjugular biopsy, and we'll show you uh, as we as we as I'm going to show you in this uh, uh, lecture. Uh, from one of the best uh, lectures I, I'd like to uh, to attend is to biopsy or not. This is a very great uh, issue we are fa facing daily in our clinics and with our patients. We are having a patient, uh, thus uh, this patient is going to have a risk of bleeding, hematomas, and so on. Can he lose his kidney by this biopsy? Uh, is the, what is the reward of this? And I, I think imagining my, my professors uh, have teach me that imagining the, uh, the biopsy results, uh, what the biopsy results will be from this biopsy, and, it, and if this these results will not push you uh, towards a special treatment, uh, so it's, uh, it's nonsense to do with this biopsy. So it's a balance between the reward and risk. Uh, first of all, Nils uh, Alwon Sweden, 1944, uh, had the uh, Nobel Prize for Innovations of ARRT and was doing renal biopsy, but in secret. He, he does not uh, tell anyone they are, that he is uh, doing uh, renal biopsies until in uh, 1951 and 1954, Kirk and uh, Morek described the use of cutting silver needle on patients in the proposition. And he told them that I was doing biopsy 10 years uh, ago. And this is the biopsy, uh, biopsy kidney in prone position first prescribed in the Lancet uh, 1954. And this was the, the shape of the needle. At this time, and this is an institute of Pisa. The Italian uh, Italian doctors, nephrologists, are pioneers. Uh, so are the needles, are Italian origin. 
uh, all the needles uh, uh, in Egypt, most of them that uh, is imported from Italy, made in Italy, which is uh, the source of uh, good needles. Uh, and this is the first uh, uh, conference to teach uh, the, the younger generations about the biopsy. And the, you can see uh, how they drew the last trip. As Dr. Gamal said, there was, uh, there was uh, 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 by x-rays, they were doing like this and they were using a fluoroscope, a fluoroscope opening uh, the back of the patient and the inflating air. <laughs> we, and this is much damage, I know. Uh, fleeting air and uh, injecting Novocaine and trying to get, uh, like to see the kidney. They like to see the kidney before getting uh, the biopsy. It's like it's like an operation. It it resembles now in the urology field the perk perk uh, perk uh, operation, uh, opening the back of the patient to take the, to get the stones. This is like okay in 1960, and this is was the the initial biopsy results. Uh, renal disease number of patients, acute glomerulitis, subacute the chronic GN, the frotic syndrome, chronic arteritis, uh, arterial hypertension, uh, collagenosis, renal amyloidosis, uh, broad uh, diagnoses, diabetic refractory and diabetes, uh, lipoid, amyloid, renal vein thrombosis, and so on. About the techniques, we are having an ultrasound uh, guided technique, uh, which is uh, used in most of uh, theaters, and we have CT guided technique. Uh, used in some in some special situations, uh, especially if the patient is uh, more and more obese, and the, the needle will have a great uh, a tall a long distance between the skin and uh, the kidney, uh, so the the patient is shifted to the CT guided uh, approach. Uh, but the ultrasound approach is uh, the base the basic uh, of uh, of this of this maneuver. There is a laparoscopic guided opening uh, open laparoscopy. Uh, by the surgeons, uh, it carries more uh, more home hemostasis, uh, good hemostasis for the patient. But it's uh, uh, it's uh, for this maneuver. This is a, uh, this is a very complicated uh, technique and transjugular well, transjugular entering from an internal jugular vein, reaching the renal vein. Uh, unfortunately, we are putting the needle. The needle is uh, is facing the medulla, so most of the core is medullary. But the advantage is when bleeding occurs from this maneuver. The bleeding enters uh, in the renal vein, uh, so uh, there is no uh, extra renal uh, bleeding, retroperitoneal uh, uh, subcapsular, uh, as you know, the, the sites of bleeding of uh, the, the renal valves. So the transjugular vein is used in a very, very high risk of bleeding. But unfortunately, you know that the cords are mostly medulla. We are facing the medulla. The cortex is uh, too far from the needle. And this is a small algorithm about uh, how to take a biopsy, uh, what to take in the, the techniques. Medical disease, the state biopsy, if the patient is cooperative, so, and, and no protipsis, no bleeding diathesis, two kidneys, normal BMI, so you can uh, percutaneous biopsy uh, and blood. Uh, if, if not, is or not is able to tolerate anesthesia, so we can do it in open laparoscopic biopsy. But I say it is much complicated procedure for the biopsies. Uh, and if there is a bleeding tendency, high bleeding tendency, it's, uh, it can be taken by transjugular biopsy. The transjugular biopsy also complicate uh, in, uh, in contraindication. The patient is having a renal impairment and you may uh, be obligated to inject uh, a small amount of contrast to, to be sure that you are in the renal vein uh, to guide, uh, to guide the, uh, the catheter to the renal vein. So the, the patient more or less will be uh, affected by this uh, contrast, uh, although being non-ionic, although being uh, a small amount, but it carries a risk uh, uh, by this transjugular biopsy. As you all know, this is uh, this is indications of renal biopsy and unexplained acute therapeutic uh, renal failure, acute nephrotic nephrotic syndromes, isolated nephrotic proteinuria, isolated glomerular hematuria, renal masses, renal graft dysfunction, renal transplant rejection, systemic diseases. And though all these indications are not absolute, uh, I think there is uh, be uh, uh, if, if every patient is identical story, you, you can proceed in this patient and the other patients not. I cannot proceed in this biopsy with other patient. There is a, a, a large number of variables uh, regarding the patient, uh, the, regard, regarding uh, uh, stories of the patient. So do not uh, rely on the indications only. Every patient has his own story and his own case. At contraindications, solitary function kidney, 
has been considered a contraindication. Now it's considered a relative contraindication uh, because uh, the, the, the new techniques of uh, biopsy is more and more safe. The needles, the new guns are more safe, so can take in an, in a single uh, in a patient's solitary function kidney. But be sure that this uh, the pathology will lead to uh, a, a different treatment modality. Uh, so do not proceed with a single kidney unless you are uh, sure that you, uh, the patient will benefit. Otherwise, if the, any bleeding occurs or uh, unfortunately in effect or so, the patient will turn to dialysis just after this technique. Contraindications, any bleeding tendencies in a way to patient to comply with the instructions. Uh, Real contraindications is uh, hypertension. And the hypertension is a very, very uh, important factor uh, to judge the patient uh, if, is, uh, if to proceed in a biopsy or not, uh, because the bleeding uh, uh, directly uh, uh, related to the blood pressure of the patient, it must control the, his blood pressure before the procedure. All patients are in a panic state during the, the biopsy, so uh, please control the, his blood pressure as, as much as you can. Ask for uh, anticoagulants, antiplatelets, uh, you know, the, the Egyptian patients does not know the names of the drugs. Please see the pam please see by yourself the pamphlets, uh, uh, sorry, the drug lists of the patients. Uh, one of my patients does not know that the Plavix is uh, for uh, antiplated. No, you know that Plavix is for uh, a drug for dyslipidemia. And so, so you must see by yourself the, 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 the medications of the patient. Or at least try it, it or at least uh, you can uh, you can show sh uh, show you. Uh, and if and if not with him, please postpone the biopsy. This is a very great issue uh, in the Egyptian patient and not knowing uh, their drugs uh, correctly. The workup, you know, the blood pressure, renal imaging, uh, urine analysis, coagulation status. Uh, stop any uh, antiplatelet or anti coagulant before. Uh, platelet count uh, more than 100. Uh, it's now you can safely take a biopsy. The platelet count more than 80,000. Uh, Prothrombin time less 1.2, bleeding time less than 10 minutes. Uh, the, you must be a good sonographer to do a, a, a renal imaging to, to judge uh, the, the, the kidney, as we will say now, uh, how the nephrologist uh, has an impact on the biopsy. Uh, you must know the, no, the types of the needles, the mechanism. Styles, we have two styles, automatic and semi-automatic needles. The automatic, the semi-automatic, we have a, a, a step which is manual. You can uh, push the choker like this and the needle will complete uh, all the mission by itself. It's called semi-automatic. Uh, the automatic needle needs a gun. Uh, you know, the, 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 all the gun works with all needles. Uh, it's not, you, don't, you are not, uh, 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 you, you cannot bring a special gun to special needle. No, all the all the guns uh, works with the old needles. Uh, so the automatic gun uh, plays all the uh, the biopsy by itself. The first and second and uh, taking the core out. The core size is uh, one centi and two centi. Color uh, good colors. You know that uh, fourteen is green, sixteen is white, eighteen is pink, and this is universal colors for the biopsy needles. Some companies change these colors. But this is the standard colors for uh, the gold. You know, this is this is called a choker. Uh, where it is cut out. This is the, the biopsy core, and this is the cutter, the outside cutter. So this cutter is moves on the cut out uh, part, and the biopsy core is kept within. Uh, this is one centi or two centimeters as uh, uh, um, regarding how you uh, take uh, the cut the, the cutter out. Okay, and you know all uh, fine, all, all uh, good needles are made in Italy. Semi-automatic needles, there is a, a, a step you are doing by your thumb to get the choker out so, uh, and the needle will complete the mission by getting the, the cutter uh, on, uh, on the needle uh, uh, to take a, a core inside. And this is the length, uh, one centi or two centimeters. If we're going to, to take a lymph node, uh, thyroid, uh, not our issue, uh, of course. Uh, it's very, it's enough to take one centimeter. And uh, our our uh, practice, the kidneys is two centimeters, two cores. This is automatic needle. This needle uh, is uh, handled in the in this gun. 
all, all types of needles were working on this gun. This is a standard universal gun. The two steps of biopsy, the trocar, then the cutter runs over the trocar uh, and will take the core out all this in one, in one step. Uh, then it's called uh, automatic needle. The automatic needle is very hard, very fast. So it carries uh, less instance of bleeding. This is uh, a trial that's done all over the world. And the way we've done this in uh, Asr al Aini. We have uh, a study about uh, complications and the needle, uh, complications and uh, the, uh, the core uh, adequacy. Uh, I will say it uh, within a few slides. If you biopsy adequacy uh, for native or transponder, transponder need 10 glomeruli. And uh, at least for the native is six million line, the biopsy for the transplant 10 million line to do a better band score and uh, two uh, arterioles to, co to better comment on the arteries. Uh, uh, in, every, in every unit, we must have a small microscope to see the glomeruli. line. So at the patient, it will be a very bad experience to, uh, to repeat the biopsy. When the patient is, is informed that this biopsy is not adequate, is going to, to repeat the biopsy he become very anxious, panic, and he can he can uh, he may uh, object to do it again. Okay. Patient education is a very 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 important issue in today's lecture. Our patients are not well educated. What about the post biopsy? Uh, what to do post biopsy? The patient may come out of the procedure and go to uh, to visit someone and go to. Uh, to, to, to buy something and uh, have his families out and so they must know that the, the, he is uh, to lie supine at least two to six hours post biopsy uh, to, to let the pain uh, less and to minimize the complication. So the patient education is very important. Uh, also the patient to resume his antiplatelets, anticoagulants, this is a very, very important question when to resume the antiplatelet anticoagulation. If the patient is, uh, uh, is not having a complication like hematuria or uh, abdominal, severe abdominal pain, uh, so he can resume at least 24 to 48 hours after the procedure because there is a delayed bleeding, as you know. Uh, another uh, education is about the dialysis. If the patient is having a biopsy when he is on a dialysis, it's contraindicated to have a dialysis on the same day, even with heparin-free heparin, heparin, heparin techniques, and the patient may bleed from the biopsy. So uh, when the patient is having a biopsy in the same day of uh, dialysis, uh, it's contraindicated to have the biopsy in the same day of uh, dialysis. Uh, I'm going, to, I'm going to, uh, to, to show you some helpful tips, uh, not written in the books, but it may um, uh, aid uh, each other to uh, get uh, an adequate core. Uh, may, may some of you may hear it uh, before. And this is the long axis biopsy uh, technique. We have two techniques in biopsy. It's a long axis and short axis. Long axis like this. Uh, uh, this is the needle. And this is the end of uh, the probe. This is a complex probe. 3.5 to 5 uh, megahertz. The low frequency probes for better uh, penetration. Uh, we, we, we call it the abdominal, abdominal ultrasound probe. No, it's called low frequency probe. Uh, and this, and this, and this is the, you can, you can see this is the, the, the probe. And this is the needle. This is the long axis. Why long axis is better? Because I can see the whole needle inside the cortex. Okay. I can, I can enter the kidney from this to uh, benefit from this cortical area all this and to avoid the middle. Also, I can enter from this, not to enter the cortical area and to enter uh, the, uh, the middle to go the cortical area. So the, the needed uh, to be superficial, okay? You can see the, this graphic. To have uh, your uh, core, uh, cortical core. This is the long axis. What about short axis? The short axis need more uh, to be more expert because you can you can miss the tip of the needle. You enter the needle in the middle of the ultrasound probe, not the end like the longer axis. This is a short axis. 
And this short axis and long axis uh, techniques are applied to all interventions. This is an intervention law by ultrasound. Any percutaneous intervention law, you can enter, uh, take a biopsy, uh, apply a, a vascular axis. When you reach a structure within the human body, you can see all the needle with enter the school long axis and and where you can uh, uh, enter from the, the middle of the poop, which called short axis. The short axis, unfortunately, if you're not expert enough, you cannot see the tip of the needle. You can miss it, the tip of the needle, and uh, uh, you can uh, pass uh, the, the kidney and you can uh, make an entry. This is the needle seen in the, uh, in the uh, cortex. What about uh, uh, the main uh, issues about the, the biopsy procedure itself? Uh, the consent is very important. In describing the patient what is it, what you're going to do. Uh, is it protocol or indicated biopsy? I think um, uh, I'm not taking protocol biopsy long, long ago. It's now uh, taking indicated biopsies only. I'll try on guide or blind. I not, did not mean the blind mean blind by blind that you're not using ultrasound at all. No, you are using ultrasound. Then you uh, take a picture, uh, know the distance between the kidney and the, the skin. And this is called freeze technique. And it's not used nowadays. Uh, it's uh, ultrasound, uh, ultrasound guided all through. You can see the needle entering the skin, subcutaneous tissue and muscles and entering the, the kidney. Cap guided to free handed, please. All are uh, 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 the expert in the offices are using the freehand uh, free technique. But the cap guided is better because the cap, uh, when the, the, the probe wears the cap, the cap guides the needle towards the kidney and minimize the complication. So, uh, to, all the, to all the beginners of the biopsy, please uh, try to, uh, to have a biopsy cap over the probe. Do not use the probe by your hand, by the needle by your hand, and the other free hand. No, the, the needle will not enter by uh, the plane. You are imagining your brain, no. It will enter. It will, it may uh, may cause injury. So, to all for all beginners, we are going to buy an ultrasound machine. Please ask uh, the manufacturers to give us uh, the cap of the biopsy. Okay, the uh, cap, biopsy cap. It's upper or lower pool. If, uh, uh, lower pool, less complications for the native uh, kidneys, and upper pool uh, are uh, less complications for the transplant kidney for sake of uh, the blood vessels for the transplant kidney away then be upward and the lower pore to be away from the diaphragm uh, suprarenal uh, uh, gland and the uh, chest uh, and, uh, away from the liver away from the spleen away from the pneumothorax so the lower pole is uh, more safe pre-medication sedation um, in, in many, many countries, I, I, share, I share experience with Wisconsin, especially in the Royal Preston course, uh, when I, I, I meet uh, doctors from, uh, from Europe uh, and from the United States, they say that they are giving their patients uh, uh, yeah, I mean, a light sedation before the biopsy and DDVB despopressin because it improves uh, the platelet dysfunction, even if the platelet number is okay, but they give them, they used to give them despopressin before uh, uh, biopsy. This practice is not uh, known in Egypt and, and, and didn't, I, I do not give them our patients the question before. Uh, the local anesthesia is very, very important. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the local anesthesia it's, it must, be, must be put intradermal, uh, not in the fat. The fat, uh, we have two points, we have two uh, points of pain in the skin and the cortex. So we, we must look at anesthesia in the skin and in the cortex, but we uh, bypass putting the, 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 the anesthesia in the cortex of the kidneys. It's very painful. When the patient uh, feels the needle in the cortex, he can move and uh, the, the, the needle will, will cause a tear in the, in the capsule. This is coagulation profile needed before. Platelets, uh, prothrombin, and uh, partial thromboplastin time if the patient was on heparin before or so. Uh, uh, blood pressure should be uh, uh, should be controlled before a good ultrasound examination. And now we are going to to describe what is the back examination of ultrasound. Needle gauge. You must choose the needle gauge and uh, tall uh, length. I, I mean, for the transplant we use a smaller, uh, and where for the native we use a longer uh, needle. 
and the gorge about uh, you must examine the kidney first large kidneys you can take a larger gorge small kidneys you must take a smaller gorge the, the smallest is 18 semi automated or automated needles the, the automated needles carries less complications than the semi automated Microscopic core examination before discharging the patient, before letting the patient off the bed, and post procedural hospital stay. There's a great debate about uh, how many hours that the patient can stay uh, in the hospital, starting from at least four to six hours to repeat ultrasound uh, before there is a, a, a delayed bleeding. Uh, it can occur two or three hours uh, post bout. This is a classic composition for the biopsy. Uh, 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 unless pregnant or having ascites, mechanical ventilation, in, in, or transplant, we are going to describe what is uh, the, the position that can the patient uh, undergo during the, the procedure. This is a classic prone position. This is called lateral left lateral recumbent, and this is called lateral uh, uh, anterolateral. This is anterolateral, and this is left lateral. And this sitting biopsy. And this is the biopsy for the transplant. When the patient uh, is pregnant or having ascites or have, 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 having despite discomfort, then we are going to proceed with left lateral or uh, the anterolateral or the sitting uh, position. And this is the CT guided prone position during CT. This is the lateral position. Uh, my patient, the main patient with massive ascites. Uh, we have so many patients in nephrotic syndrome having ascites and the pleural effusion and so they are in, in the respiratory stress. So we can proceed with, with biopsy in this, uh, in this position, it's called left lateral. This is ultrasound image, this is the liver, and this is the safe triangle you can enter here to reach the cortex. This is not the lower bone, this is the mid, mid cortex. So uh, this is an alternative uh, position to take the biopsy in acidic or pregnant patients. About uh, to biopsy or not in, a, in pregnancy, in Egyptian culture, unfortunately, they do not accept any complications to a pregnant female to undergo a biopsy or to lose a child or uh, bleeding and so on. So I, re I, I almost reject all the pregnant uh, biopsies uh, unless there is a major uh, change, rapidly progressive GN uh, uh, before 20 weeks of uh, uh, course. After 20 weeks, I refuse all the biopsies uh, and postpone it after delivery, unless it's a solid indication. And this is a, a slide was uh, presented in the World Congress of Nephrology 2021 uh, about the relation of the biopsy to the pregnancy is uh, when to do for a pregnant patient, uh, pre-pregnancy to, to diagnose uh, and to optimize her uh, drugs for major pregnancy. During uh, pregnancy and uh, uh, to facilitate diagnosis of primary disease, but in the Egyptian culture, <laughs> it's, it's not very easy to inform the patient that, that you are, you are, your female uh, has a bleeding and the uh, blood transfusion. And so it's not very easy in, uh, in our Egyptian culture. The, our Egyptian people does not accept any complication in a pregnant female. And when they see the consent, uh, they refused the biopsy. Uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a study, the last study for the pregnant uh, females, they are saying that major bleeding uh, are uh, uh, crossing five to seven percent, which is more or less high. Why? The, patient, the, the, the pregnant patient has a very high vascular kidney. The kidney increase in size, increase in vascularity. The touching this kidney may carry a big risk of uh, big risk of uh, bleeding, and uh, I, I reject all patients uh, um, seeking FSGS due to pregnancy, seeking simple proteinuria uh, during pregnancy before uh, after 20 weeks. All these drops are rejected because our patients do not tolerate. Regarding mechanical ventilation, this is called a win-win situation. When I, when during the COVID era, uh, the patients are uh, put on the prone position to improve oxygenation. Uh, when uh, this, 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 of course, this position is very ideal for, for the biopsy. So when I, uh, I, I'm told that I have a patient to take a biopsy in the, in the mecha uh, during mechanical ventilation or, or in, this, in the ICU, 
in the COVID or other uh, or other diagnoses, uh, it's not a big deal because the proposition is good. So, uh, mechanical ventilation is not a big deal to do to uh, to perform a, mecha a mechanical uh, sorry renal biopsy. During the transplant, <clears throat> the patient see everything. The patient is lying supine on his back. He's he's seeing the the long needle. The procedure when you are going to uh, have your dis uh, infection disinfection. Uh, the patient is panic about his kidney, precious kidney. I have paid a lot of money. I have seen a lot of things to, to reach this point that I'm transplanted. <clears throat> when the patient on his back, he is, he is easier to move. When the patient is prone, it's very difficult to move. He can move his uh, back, uh, a very limited movement, but uh, the patient, uh, especially if he's younger in age, uh, not a pediatric population, of course, their population needs Kitalar and so need uh, appropriate sedation. But when the patient, the teenager, starting the teenager, the patient can uh, move his leg and throw the needle. Uh, so please, please, please do not trust that the patient will, uh, may, may, uh, if not inform it about the steps and uh, instruct the patient that you may feel some pain when you, when you feel some pain, please tell me, do not move uh, because the supine position uh, carries easier uh, position to move. And the transplant kidney uh, uh, biopsy is like an ectopic kidney. If you are uh, uh, obliged to take a from ectopic kidney, the same rules that the patient is getting supine in his, in his back. And uh, mostly, most of ectopic kidneys are uh, in the pelvis, pelvic kidneys. So uh, the same rules of the transplant uh, goes with the ectopic kidney. So the graphic examination, this is the main topic I'd like you all to, to know that the internal examination is very important to judge the chronicity. If this patient uh, uh, may do a, a, a 10 ultrasounds with different uh, results, this is called, this is saying that this is a grade one, this is grade two, there's a cortical uh, uh, fistooned, this is medallic, the poor cell brilliant differentiation. So uh, the frogs uh, can judge the chronicity. Hydronephrosis pre and post, uh, please uh, do not proceed to biopsy in a patient with a, a, a surgical uh, problem. Um, uh, calculi uh, with the stent, uh, uh, uteric stent, do not proceed with biopsy unless there is a, a very, very, very uh, 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 indication, very obliged indication, I'm obliged to do so, urgent indication. Uh, and you must do the ultrasound post biopsy because the, the patient may bleed in the renal pelvis and uh, hydrophosis is eventually occurs. Uh, the patient uh, uh, must be examined for a previous biopsy. If the patient ha uh, was having a biopsy uh, two weeks ago and failed, and the, uh, you, must, uh, you must examine the patient. There's a, a hematomas uh, inside the uh, subcapsular hematomas, uh, retroperitoneal. Uh, um, uh, abdominal pelvic hematomas before the new valves. Mal rotated kidney uh, to minimize the complications. Is there any cysts before the cyst? If the, if the cyst ruptures, the patient will have some sort of like anaphylaxis. Small uh, uh, patient attack, uh, uh, may, may, may experience some rigors when you uh, puncture these cysts during the biopsy. Please be away from the cysts. The calculi is that carries a very uh, uh, a, a very high risk of bleeding because when you uh, uh, enter the kidney with a calculi inside, so uh, the the tissues uh, uh, the, the blood vessels is, is extremely injured at this point when you when you put the, the needle over the calculi, so uh, the extreme uh, tissue injury and blood vessel injury. Please please. Um, uh, be sure that there is no calculi. Any effusions or ascites that uh, let, uh, make our patient is uh, clinically not suitable for biopsy, please uh, treatment of this uh, generalized anasarca first uh, before uh, proceeding to biopsy. And post biopsy complications around the kidney and liver. And this one of the main topics of today's lecture is the back ultrasound. We, most of us does not know that this uh, this is a, a very very important before you proceed to an account to, 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 to know how to uh, uh, to see uh, the ribs uh, the gut uh, the transverse processes the iliac crest 
this is a rib, a rib of course, this is a last rib. This is a convexity, lower convexity of uh, the kidney, sinus and parenchyma. You must know that there is any no gut in the way in order to avoid intestinal injury. So back ultrasound is a part of, of uh, our, uh, our uh, uh, course in uh, renal ultrasound, in the biopsy and the and renal ultrasound course. Back ultrasound is very important to learn before, uh, before, before procedure. This is the dotted line of uh, the cap guided biopsy. This is the rib. And whenever you enter the needle from here and you, you touch this rib, the patient will, will, will shout out because the, the lower board, the lower convexity of the kidney inside the last rib. So you must know, and this is uh, a bowel. When we enter the, the needle to this bowel. It's not, it's not an easy, uh, it's not an easy biopsy to do it before uh, without knowing the anatomy of the back. This is the free-handed, I will biopsy guided cap. This is a free-handed. This needs an expert because you, uh, this uh, needle may be maldirected to the right or to the left and not seen by uh, the probe. This needle enters the middle of the kidney, may cause more complication. And this is the biopsy gap guided, uh, uh, angles of inclination, one, two, three angles to, be, to adjust to the, the, the kidney, either it's superficial or deep. And of course, it suits the beginners more than the freehand. This is more suitable for the beginners, not uh, the freehand. And this is a dotted line. You see this ultrasound uh, at the left and no dotted line. This is the dotted line of the, the cap guided uh, biopsy. The needle will enter in this line till reaching the cortex. The anesthesia. The very important, you must make this blip. This blip is very important to uh, minimize uh, the pain uh, at least by 90%. If you do not this, do this blip, the patient will uh, uh, will feel uh, the needle and so on. Local and spinal needle, I do not need this. Uh, I do, I do not, uh, in our uh, practice uh, a lot, but the bacteria capsule is, uh, is painful. And this is the, uh, in the pediatric population, I, I used to, uh, to, uh, to use uh, Ketelar before. And in some special situations, the general anesthesia in the patient cannot tolerate uh, seeing the needle or uh, so we, can, we may use a general anesthesia in some populations. Scalp snip is very important. Uh, uh, first of all, by scalp snip, you are doing a live bleeding time. If the patient laps is okay, uh, INR, PT, PC, uh, PTT, bleeding time. When you use this this scalp snip in the, the in the area that you are given, you are given the you are given the the, the, the local. You are doing a blood bleeding time. If it's more than two minutes, uh, two, you can uh, postpone the biopsy or search for another uh, causes of uh, or, or repeat the bleeding uh, profile. Or ask the patient what 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 are used to do, to take in the last few days, or take or revise his medications. Okay, persistent bleeding. Uh, of course, this will uh, take a risk that the, the the kidney inside will bleed. Also, take care. The skin bleeding will make a sign that the kidney will bleed. Also, this blood will make the needle full of blood. Okay, so the ultrasound. Uh, image will be hazy and you uh, cannot see the needle. To see the needle entering the kidney, the needle must be of blood. Okay, the the blood will take will 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 hinders the good uh, visual acuity of the tip of the needle. Okay, so you must uh, wash this this or get this blood out before you entering the needle in the body. Sides to be avoided. Lateral and node barbed vertebral. Please. This patient is like uh, is lying prone. This is paravertebral, just over the the, the, the the renal arteries and veins. The kidney, of course, are here. The arteries and veins are here. So, as much as you can be away from the vertebral column, please, to be uh, at the, the lateral the lateral part of the uh, of the body. 
do not be more and more uh, uh, inside to avoid injury of uh, the big vessels. The transplant, be away please of the operative scar because the operative scar, scar uh, has much, much fibrosis. So the needle, the cutter, uh, which is uh, sliding over the choker, will not enter, will not take a good bounce. All this part of the kidney is fi of the skin is fibrous. So uh, you must be uh, a little bit down in the healthy skin. Needle size and gauge, as we said before, and we have done a, a, a study about the needle size and gauge, and we reached that uh, the conclusion that 16 gauge automatic needle is. Uh, having, uh, having less complications and more biopsy adequacy. Cortex tip. When you, when, you, uh, when you instruct the patient to stop breathing, uh, unfortunately, take a deep breath. So do not uh, 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 tell the patient to stop his breath because he will take a deep breath, be uh, ready. The cortex may be festooned. It's, the size, it's, it's a sign of fibrosis. Assist in the way. Please uh, uh, be aware that the, the cyst may rupture. Touch the, the, the cortex not. Touching the cortex is important uh, in order not uh, to, uh, to, to minimize the uh, causing a tear in the cortex. You must touch it first. When you, got, when you fire the needle before the cortex, the, the kidney uh, is pushed uh, or there is a, a risk of tear. So we must touch the cortex. And of course, touching the cortex is very painful. So uh, much touch the cortex and uh, take the biopsy uh, very rapidly. Not most lower part, not here, because this will may do a, a, a tear in this part. This is lower part, not, uh, not most lower part, because this will this cap of the kidney may be torn out and bleeding starts from it. So do not be uh, very, 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 very lower. Okay. Complications, panic, pain, more than 12 hours, injury, visceral graft, hematuria, hematoma, infection, if fistulas, if you should and risk, and if, uh, of course, defectomy and that is. Uh, and this is some biopsy uh, 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 tips to be away from the medulla. And this is a hematoma inside the bladder. And this subcapsular hematomas. And this is a this is retroperitoneal hematoma. CT uh, image of retroperitoneal hematoma. And this is subcapsular hematoma. Subcapsular hematoma, by the way, they're very, very, very painful. The patient cannot tolerate of the pain. If the patient post biopsy have is having a, a strong pain, you may. Uh, uh, you may find by ultrasound that he's having a subcapsular hematoma, and this is a retroperitoneal. Okay, Manage, management of hematoma debates. First of all, what about IV fluids? Give the patient IV fluids in, in a bleeding patient or not? You must know the law of the permissive hypertension. When you give the patient uh, more fluids, the patient blood pressure will increase, so the bleeding the bleeding may may increase. So. Be cautious with IV fluids with, uh, in a bleeding patient. This is a debate. Uh, this is from a side. The other side, uh, uh, you can give the patient blood even before the hemoglobin falls. You can uh, to, uh, to ensure that the hemoglobin will not, fall, will not fall. You can give uh, the patient blood and avoid IV fluids. Second the issue about IV fluids will cause a hemodilution. So the patient starting uh, before biopsy 10, hemoglobin 10, remember DC liter, when you give the patient uh, 1000 cc or so, the hemoglobin will drop and you'll be confused. This patient, a uh, drop of hemoglobin due to uh, more, more, uh, more high, uh, IV fluids or uh, due to uh, uh, bleeding loss, blood loss. Control blood pressure, also a debate. Do I, I control blood pressure? Uh, no, uh, of course, uh, any hypertensive patient will bleed more. So, control pressure, and do not, but please do not uh, uh, let the patient take uh, more uh, medication, more of his medications to adjust blood pressure in uh, in the normal uh, value. Prothrombotics. Uh, you know that vitamin K administration or uh, 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 transexamic acid 
may cause renal vein thrombosis of the transplant kidney. Uh, be aware. Also, the capron may cause bladder hematomas. So the prothrombotics debate: Do they give patient cyclocapron No, you must know that it carries some uh, complication at the end of the way. At the end of the way, may, may, may experience complication. Uh, like uh, vein thrombosis, uh, especially renal uh, graft vein thrombosis. To do intervention or surgical, uh, when you refer the patient to intervention radiology to stop this bleeding, uh, you must know that the, the, the radiologist will use the contrast to search. And this searching needs a lot of contrast. So the patient are taking a biopsy because his uh, creatinine 2.4 and GFR is uh, 41 uh, milliliter per minute who will come out of this uh, procedure, uh, anoric and for dialysis. So the, do not proceed to uh, uh, intervention radiology unless the, there is a blood, there is a hemoglobin drop and there is a blood, uh, there is a hemodynamic instability uh, because many bleeding can stop by itself uh, after a while, but, but with a very, very close follow-up. Uh, blood transfusion, as I said, is better than the IV fluids, even with no hemoglobin drop because it uh, contains uh, uh, blood factors, blood, blood clotting factors. Uh, native or transplant uh, nephrectomy, please, when, when we have uh, hematomas in the transplant and you open this patient by a surgical uh, for fear that this uh, blood uh, increases, no weight, the, this blood, in, in, especially in the, in, the, in, the, in the transplant population, this is a closed space. The blood will uh, is very it will tamponade uh, the tear in the kidney, and in in, in, in many cases the, the bleeding will stop. But I, I'm sure I'm sure in many cases when you open this patient by the urologists, the the, the issue ends in nephrectomy, transplant nephrectomy. They were not able to stop the bleeding inside. Uh, uh, in most of cases, not even the issue will end in transplant nephrectomy. So antibiotics, uh, blood transfusion, uh, pain painkillers, complete bed rest. Uh, do not give the patient more and more IV fluids. Uh, avoid hemodilution. Avoid blood, permissive hypertension uh, in order to avoid uh, a lot of bleeding. Do not give the patient many many more uh, prothrombotics. Do not rush the intervention radiology unless there is uh, uh, there is an indication the patient is going down, and so on. And this is another study about elastography we're doing in uh, Australia about to increase, uh, to decrease the biopsy uh, uh, in, in indications in the patients with uh, chronic allograft nephropathy. Uh, we have published the shear wave role and we are uh, now uh, studying the strain elastography, especially the transplant kidney is very near below the skin. It, uh, we can do it for, for it a strain in, in addition to shear wave. You know the strain elastography for the liver and for the native kidney is very uh, is not is not an easy by the way, but it uh, for it, it, this technique for the transplant kidney is is absolutely easy. The kidney can be compressed by the probe uh, when the priority box uh, touch uh, the point with with, with uh, and uh, you have a green color. So this uh, uh, kidney is hard or not, and you are grading this. Is uh, we ha unfortunately we are not we are lacking standardization, but we are giving it a degree is E0, E1, E2, E3, E4, and we are comparing this strain histography by the EFTA and interstitial fibrosis and tubular atrophy. Do not rush. A very small cases in the, the end of this uh, talk. Day zero renal transplantation, progressive oliguria, then anuria, pain and tenderness over the graft. You may be confused uh, by this uh, uh, patient and rush to biopsy. Take care to diagnose renal vein thrombosis. When you take a biopsy from a renal uh, and a graft to the vein thrombosis, the bleeding will be heroic. The, the difference between the vein thrombosis and the high resistivity index is this wave. When the diastolic wave reaches the next wave, this is a renal vein thrombosis, which is missed by a lot of uh, operators. They do not know if there's there any renal vein thrombosis or, or simply it's high safety index due to rejection or so, or ATN postoperative, and proceed for biopsy. And the, the bleeding is heroic in a renal vein, in a graft vein thrombosis patient. Another case 27 years old, male patient, renal transplant seven months ago, 
failure and output indicate failure perhaps due to rapid duration of functions. Graft ultrasound and doctor is normal. Penal biopsy done, and we uh, uh, frequently ask the patient, what about the urine? Is there hematuria? And the patient is unable to urinate post biopsy. So please uh, be sure that you can know, you can do uh, ultrasound uh, of the bladder to see the bladder hematoma. By a rods, you can insert a, a wide board Nelliton caster and flush the urinary bladder. Uh, if this if this complication happened in an, a, a recent transplant, it may cause rupture of the anastomosis, rupture of the graft, because progressive hydronephrosis in the graft due to bladder bladder hematoma increasing, it reaches the graft ureter, the graft pelvis, and may rupture the graft. So this complication is very important. Please take care of it. This is typical approaches to avoid the bleeding. Uh, case three, 56 years old, male patient, renal transplant recipient three months ago, the deterioration of kidney function from one to one to 1.8. Uh, renal biopsy is required by a treating physician. Normal graft and sound and Doppler. During examination, I found there is a dilated bowel loops. Uh, I said to the patient, please uh, try to fast for two or three hours before the procedure. And his uh, relatives say to me that he stopped eating at all one week ago. Why? Because he shift, uh, he has financial support and shift his treatment from ASA to MMF and he experiences abdominal distension, occasional vomiting, food intolerance, cannot eat at all. And this, why, this is why the, the creatine uh, changed from 1.1 to 1.8. Uh, I, 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 told, I, I tell his nephrologist and talk to him to try to get back to ASA, may uh, the problem subsides and this and this uh, uh, advice, alhamdulillah, uh, was was a good advice because the patient went back to ASA to subside, food intolerance improved, and the function declined. Case four, 30 years old, male patient, renal transplant, seven day 10, feverish and rising functions sent for biopsy. Graft and salt and Doppler was normal. Please, please, when you send your patient for biopsy, in uh, especially uh, a patient with a recent transplant, examine the skin of the patient. Uh, the patient's immunocompromised may have a cellulitis or a paniculitis overlying the, uh, the transplant kidney. So when you uh, put the needle inside this uh, infected skin, you will take the infection inside the graft. Uh, and this, this is easily diagnosed by ultrasound. Another infection is commonly seen in our patients and we, and we, and we can miss is the psoas muscle ultrasound, especially in the recent patient with recent uh, uh, graft uh, transplantation. Uh, 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 the urologists in the, in the recipient uh, theater are uh, uh, opening in uh, the psoas muscle in order to suit this graft. So uh, the psoas muscle may have some hematomas and these hematomas, uh, by the way, by the immune suppression may change to uh, infection and psoas abscess. Uh, and this was the cause of rising kidney functions and this is, abscess is drained and the patient returns to normal. Take home message, to be a good interventionist, you must be a good sonographer. Uh, thank you uh, and uh, sorry to be uh, somehow late. Uh, I hope that uh, the, the lecture was uh, uh, beneficial for, uh, for uh, all, of, uh, all of you and thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Moataz, for this very excellent uh, presentation, uh, very uh, updated and uh, very comprehensive. Uh, I, I think we might have a, a few minutes for some of the discussions. And let me first ask you, um, uh, Moataz, uh, are there any indications for biopsying uh, uh, end-stage kidneys, which are small in size, uh, any any kidney can be biopsied. This is a low. Any kidney can be biopsied. But uh, the complications of uh, the small size kidneys, it carries more and more complications because uh, there is a fibrosis. The vessels are, the vessels are fibrosis. They're not easy to st uh, stop uh, bleeding. Uh, the importance of uh, biopsying uh, the small size kidney is, of course, to know what was the pathology for the next transplantation. I know uh, uh, to, to have a tissue diagnosis. But uh, unfortunately, uh, whenever you have a, a, a highly ecogenic kidney and smaller size kidney, it carries a, a, a higher instance of uh, bleeding. Uh, Professor Gamal, uh, we, uh, we have on the chat. Uh, 
Uh, in case, yes. In, uh, uh, before going to the chat, I have two short questions. Uh, if we have uh, kidneys with thin cortex, uh, could you elaborate, uh, 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 Dr. Mu'taz, about needles, needles which have uh, uh, double clicks for opening for half the distance or uh, full distance? Uh, we, which, uh, as I said, Dr. Gamal, uh, we have two sides of the core. We can take one click, with it, which is one centimeter, and two clicks, which is two centimeters. To avoid the medulla, we can, if we, we uh, had the cortex, uh, uh, thinner cortex, as you said, our dear professor, we can use the one centimeter. Uh, it may be uh, insufficient, but when we enter inside the medulla, uh, it carries more and less bleeding. So uh, these are the two options we have, one centimeter or two centimeters. So when we have a thinner but, cortex, we but, are going to have a, a, a smaller uh, a core. My, my last point is about uh, any special uh, precautions or indications or procedures when you are uh, biopsying horse shoe kidneys. Yes. The horse, the horse shoe kidneys, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, are- El, el biopsy uh, horse shoe kidneys, Yamatas. Yes, yes. Our shoe kidneys are uh, unfortunately in the midline, where the midline. Uh, uh, if, if they are not seen by the, nephor, uh, the, by the, the operator very well, uh, the demarcation and the cortex may be not seen by the, the operator and uh, injury may occur because it's very, uh, uh, it's like midline, it's very near to the, the great vessels, the water and the IVC and so it, it, It's not out, it's not uh, uh, to in the patient flanks like the other kidneys, no, it's in the, in the midline. So we now, as I said, we, we, we are going paravertebral so it carries a, a larger, a, a, a higher incidence of bleeding. So the horse shoe kidneys uh, biopsy is, uh, uh, I didn't do it uh, in my practice in the horse shoe kidneys because it's uh, beside the large vessels. Yeah, we have three questions, uh, Dr. Mu'taz in the chat. Uh, okay. One about would you inject the local anesthetic inside the cortex or just around the capsule? Uh, um, I inject I the local anesthetic when the patient, when I reach the patient, the patient uh, 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 feel the, the needle, I inject by a spinal needle, okay? But, uh, but uh, I, I believe we don't need to inject the cortex, we don't need. No, 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 just outside the course of your demand. So I'll tell you when... When should you suspect the renal vein thrombosis before graft biopsy? RPT and I tell you also be a renal vein thrombosis. Renal vein thrombosis has a direct evidence and indirect evidence. Direct evidence, you can say the you can see the renal vein occluded by a thrombus, and the, it, it does not take color with the Doppler and does not take color with the power Doppler. And the, there is a, a new techniques in the GE machines, uh, B flow uh, techniques. Uh, installed in our Osraini now in our unit, in our new machines to uh, elaborate uh, infarctions and uh, renal vein uh, circulation. Uh, this is direct, direct to see the, the vein. Uh, uh, indirect, indirect uh, type, indirect method to elaborate the wave. Does the, does the wave uh, is like, as, you, as I said, the diastole, the entire diastole below the line reaches the next cycle so the blood does not uh, move at all to the venous side. So it is a venous thrombus, okay? But uh, if, the, if the diastolic wave does not, uh, 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 does not reach uh, the next cycle, so the uh, part of the blood is moving to the venous uh, system. So this patient is not having a renal vein thrombosis, either direct or indirect. But the biopsy of the renal vein thrombosis patient is heroic. Uh, uh, one of our colleagues is inquiring about the uh, issue of uh, switching from MMF uh, to other cyprene and uh, because of uh, complications or bowel complications. This is a case was referred to me and uh, I'd like to share it with you. Uh, simply, uh, his creatinine was rising because it does not eat, cannot tolerate food at all. 
uh, uh, vomiting, uh, 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 starting from uh, the financial support that he uh, done from his one of his relatives. He said to him, I will bring you F MMF uh, instead of ASA. And uh, after three weeks, the creatin started to rise due to uh, food intolerance. Uh, and I noticed when I say to him, please come fasting, he said to me, I, I, I does not eat, I do not drink uh, uh, a week ago or so. And I, I think that whenever, when he shifted to the drug and this, and this happened, and we, when I said this to his nephrologist in this case, he, he stopped the MMF and back to as the patient uh, Keratin. Now, uh, I, 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 did, I did not know the rest of the story, but this was happened with me. So I, I was like, I would like to share, do not rush to biopsy. Uh, this is the nephrologist job to uh, detect, uh, sorry, to examine the patient, uh, take a proper history, do an ultrasound image. Uh, uh, of course, that's not done in the, in the radiology centers. The radiology center is uh, uh, targeted. When the patient goes to him, I need a biopsy, so is, he will do a biopsy for him. But the nephrologist handling is uh, somehow different. I ask the patient, uh, transplant from how many years? What's your medication now? You have, uh, and so on. Excuse me, Mu'taz, I think he did not get, uh, get the point of uh, uh, MMF side effects, GIT side effects. Why the difference between? Okay. He did not get the point uh, of okay. uh, GIT side effects of MMF in comparison to other. Is a thioprin. He thanks you for the great explanation. Uh, let me ask you, Mu'taz, about... Uh, of when you obtain IPS uh, to consider requiring another core or not? Is it uh, uh, something? Well, can you please repeat the, the question, please? Uh, uh, is there any indication to examine the core you obtained by an IPS uh, instead of using your naked eye uh, uh, viewing of the biopsy to take another core or not? Yes, it's, it's very important. Uh, you know, uh, we have a competition in the Royal Preston Hospital, assumed by Dr. Ayman, uh, that uh, every candidate, when taking a, a sheet biopsy, he goes to the microscope and count by himself. And the, there is a, patholo a pathology uh, rep representer uh, that counts the biopsy and they make it a score. Uh, Egypt, uh, 10 uh, glomeruli, uh, Ukraine, 10, uh, eight grand and so on. Th this is to, 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 to let them to, to learn how to count the glomeruli inside. So it's very important. We can use the naked uh, magnifiers. Sorry, we can use the magnifiers or a simple microscope. But by the naked eye, uh, you miss may, may miss some glomeruli. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Motaz. I, I think it was uh, very uh, beneficial and very informative. Uh, and uh, we learned a lot of, of it. Uh, Dr. Yasser, do you have any uh, uh, data have, to, uh, to add? We have many comments and uh, from professors, and uh, Professor Faisal Shaheen wants to comment now, but uh, and I would like to welcome Professor Fatina Fadil, the, uh, the head of intervention in the project chapter, who is attending with us. Uh, Professor Faisal, please. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the talk and the discussion. Uh, I will uh, not add more, but I wanted to return back to the question uh, by Prof. Jamal about uh, atrophic kidney. What is the value to take a biopsy from atrophic kidney? Usually it is sclerosed and uh, there is no diagnosis can come out of this. Did you have so many of those? Uh, the only indication, Dr. Faisal, I'd like to welcome you. Thank you for your Thank question. You. Uh, we have the only indication uh, for the, those patients sent to uh, our unit is to know uh, what was the, the, the original pathology in the kidney in order to take uh, care during uh, next and uh, during transplantation. Uh, Hyperoxalosis, uh, FSGS. Uh, unfortunately, the biopsy uh, uh, interpretation by the pathologists 
as you said, uh, too many fibrosis. Uh, if the 80 or 90 percent, uh, the glumai, glomeruli are obsolescent, all are obsolescent, and carries a high risk of bleeding. So, uh, uh, I'm not uh, used to take the biopsy from the small size or atrophic kidneys. Okay, thank you. Professor Gamal, I have a question for Mu'taz, please. Yeah. Uh, Mu'taz, about the value of uh, doing bleeding time and clotting time before biopsy in addition to usual bleeding profile, you do PT or PT and uh, PC. Okay. Mm -hmm. The bleeding time, I, I use it uh, uh, if I, especially I do not trust the lab, I do a bleeding time during the procedure, as I, as I said in the lecture. Uh, mm -hmm. When I do a scalpel uh, on the, the, the area of anesthesia, uh, I notice the bleeding time. If it's prolonged, uh, I, I dismiss this uh, procedure in spite the labs are normal. Labs are normal so this is this is a, a live bleeding time. I do it for every patient when I do, to minimize the bleeding complications. Uh, maybe I, I, I hurt a vein or so may occur, uh, may compress uh, more and more time. But this bleeding time is done in my practice for all patients to be more and more, uh, to avoid more and more bleeding. Even okay. the, the, the lapse, as I said, is normal. Mm. Okay, you do it in, on table. Yeah. Yes, do it on table for all patients. Okay, Professor Risham Sayed wants to comment. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Mautaz, uh, and uh, driving by uh, great professors from the medical study and the machinery work up by Professor Yasser Abdel Hamid. Uh, it's really uh, very comprehensive. Uh, still, I have uh, some, uh, some points, but in, in short, the most important, I am very panicked to do a renal biopsy in outpatient ultrasonography or radiology center. Uh, all over the 35 years, I had that procedure. So do you think that it may be safe or not? I, I hate that to do. No. I do all my biopsies, all my biopsies uh, on uh, at my at the hospitals, either for Australian or in the private the private hospital. Never in a center. The patient can bleed within minutes. The patient yes, can that, what, what I see, yes, what I see uh, nowadays, uh, probably two years ago, this that is, is the the centers, yes. And it's extremely uh, traumatic, and maybe patient is coming down immediately after biopsy and going to the traffic. والمطبات والاخر يعني حاجه يعني هيرويك دكتور هشام ما عندهمش سرير العين ينام عليه يعني مراكز الاشعه انا اسف انا بقولها ما عندهمش سرير العين يريح عليه على ظهره يعني يعني يس شور از ا فيري فيري امبورتنت تو كومبريس ذا كورتكس فور تو اورز يس ماي مسج جاست فور ذا فلور اند ذا جينيور نيفروجيت نيفر 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 تو الاو ا بيشنت تو دو ا بايوبسي ان ا اوت بيشنت راديولوجي سنتر Yes. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed that. وشكرا دكتور ياسر على المجهود العظيم طبعا والوجوه المتغيرة والمواضيع المميزة جدا. وكل سنة وانتم طيبين. شكرا وانتم طيبين. Our colleague uh, uh, asking uh, the, the first three questions asks you about us to share uh, paper of EDTA about okay. mention. Uh, you may, you yes, mentioned wireless people. ultrasounds. In, yes, wireless yes. ultrasounds. Uh, it's my honor that Dr. Gamal had uh, said in the area. Yes, uh, he wants okay. you to share it, please. Any, any time you can share in the okay. group of ABC. Uh, Professor okay. Saif Samis wants to comment. Uh, thank you, Professor Yasser. Thank you, Professor Gamal, Professor Hisham, and Professor Faisal, and uh, Professor Tar, all, all professors and attendees. Uh, thanks, Professor Mahtaz, for this elegant presentation, as usual. Uh, just in a uh, in few lines, can you summarize uh, the bit common or major pitfalls can happen uh, during sampling, uh, allocation, and the processing of the tissue specimen? or the biopsy, I mean, uh, renal biopsy uh, or renal tissue uh, to, uh, to avoid these pitfalls and to, to miti uh, uh, mitigate the need for uh, uh, repeating renal biopsy for uh, unnecessary. And thank you so much. 
اوكي ثانك يو دكتور سعيد ربنا يخليك يا رب شكرا ذا ذا سوليوشنز سوليوشنز ار يوزنج اوكي فيرست اوف اول ذا فورمالين فور ذا لايت مايكروسكوب اوكي فور ايميونو فلوريسنت Uh, the gel, the tissue tech or gel, you can use gel, you can use saline, but uh, it must it may be, it, it must be examined within uh, hours, as you know. There is, is a replacement of this tissue tech or gel by a Michel solution, uh, supplied by the microbiology team in our uh, Al They are applying this Michel solution to preserve for uh, immunofluorescent examination. Uh, the immunoperoxidase technique needs formaldehyde like the light microscopy. The electronic microscopy needs uh, two tubes of glutaraldehyde, uh, but if you will do the, for the, the, the electronic microscopy within two days only, you can put it in the formaldehyde and send for the, for the, for the pathology lab. So the, elect the electron microscopy, if it will be late to be examined more than one or two days, please put it in glutaraldehyde. Otherwise, you can put it in the formal line. Uh, the it, it, immunoperoxidase does not uh, may, may, may be put on the formalin also, the light microscopy. Uh, the immunofluorescent has two options. It, if it will be examined within a few hours, so put it on a gel or saline. If not, will be <coughs> examined for a few days, put it on a shell solution, a special solution uh, prepared by our uh, colleagues in the microbiology team. And, okay. the, uh, and the, during this uh, processing of the sample itself, I mean, uh, you can smash it uh, in a wrong way and uh, you will need another biopsy. So how can we avoid this? Uh, unfortunately, over every pathology lab, <laughs> when, uh, damn it, when destroy the specimen, you say that the operator is the one who yes. has to, didn't take the biopsy well. <laughs> yes. I never, I never, ever, ever, ever uh, get the patient with that he came to me that the pathology lab are saying we have احنا بوظنا العينه الحقيقه احنا اسفين لا ما حصلتش كل له يرجع يقول للدكتور معتز هو اللي مش عارف ياخد العينه للاسف <تصفيق> يعني طبعا اه ساعات بتبوظ من الباثولوجي طبعا اوكي ثانك يو بوز بروفيسور ثانك يو سو ماتش دكتور ابو زيد از ريزنج هيز هاندز اند وونتس تو اسك ا كويستشنز بليز دكتور خالد سانكي دكتور دكتور ياسر شكرا دكتور معتز سانكي شكرا دكتور جمال اكشولي دكتور جمال ريمايند اس موست اوف ميستيكس اور فولتس وي ار جيتنج بيفور ان ذا اولد ايرا ويز بلايند دي بايوبسي تيكن ايفن بيفور الترا ساوند جايدد اند وي هاف ا لوت اوف سوبرا رينال جلاند بايوبسي بانكرياتيك سبلينيك انتستين سام تايمز فات سام تايمز ماسل بات ويز الترا ساوند دكتور معتز اكشولي اي هاف ان اكسبيرينس ويز الترا ساوند جايدد بايوبسي اي كان نوت يعني اي اي دو سينس 3 3 ييرز ناو ادايز سي تي جايدد بايوبسي اي هاف اباوت 150 بايوبسي ان ذا لاست 3 ييرز سي تي جايدد Actually, the uh, side effect was to uh, CT-guided biopsy is very, very less in comparison with ultrasound-guided biopsy. Uh, I, if, I, if you have any uh, paper or any studies done as regards this issue in comparison between the ultrasound and CT, uh, really my own experience was 150 uh, biopsies, renal biopsies in the last three years with CT-guided, the uh, side effect is very, very minimal. My direct question, actually technical question for you. We have already at least three or four cores. Did you change, did you change the direction of the needle during the taking the biopsy? Or you take from the same, uh, the same side? Good question. Good question, Dr. Khaled. Thanks for your impact, uh, for your questions. Thank you. Uh, first of all, the ultrasound guided, the guided uh, uh, biopsy is uh, easier than CT guided because it's a bit side. You know, when you have a transplant patient with uh, pain in the wound, a transfer is very difficult. So the bedside uh, service is, uh, is, 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 is of choice in this situation. Uh, and it's by ultrasound easier. Uh, and, the, and the patient avoids uh, uh, CT uh, radio, uh, radiographs and doses of radiation. And the post, uh, CT, post biopsy examination is very important. How can I examine by the CT uh, patient serial CTs? It will be difficult. It will, can do for ultrasound three or four ultrasounds in the next two hours after biopsy. 
so the, the ultrasound is uh, more or less uh, will be easier. Uh, 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 second question is sorry, sorry, my, my, my personal experience is CT guided biopsy in the last three years I did about 150 uh, biopsies oh. with CT guided I found it more easier than the ultrasound I have an experience with ultrasound before in the past oh. but the CT I experienced this CT in the last three years and I, I, I want to, to, uh, to uh, uh, make a paper by this 150 cases. Actually, it's so easy and less complication, especially I'm the one who's right, doing the you're biopsy. Right the, you're right in the way that you must be a good, you, know, you and me and others, before taking a biopsy for ultrasound, we, we must know ultrasound and, uh, well. And this, this uh, makes me... Uh, uh, for 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 me more easier that I I do an ultrasound I do an ultrasound this I do an ultrasound uh, uh, for the patients that they're not not only intervention uh, the the classic is to do the image then to do intervention not to, to move to proceed for intervention uh, uh, I, I believe I did the image I, uh, I did the image ways. by ultra, I, I did the image by CT and after imaging and making a proper localization. And the local anesthesia and the uh, and the insertion of the needle at the site of the biopsy taken, I, I take a post renal biopsy imaging also. Uh, uh, Doctor Khaled, your your point is well taken, and it might be more, uh, 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 يعني more uh, uh, clearer image and more uh, definitive uh, measures and so on. But it is not very practical for every. Uh, nephrologist or every center to perform the city guided the biopsies it would yes, be more practical to proceed with the uh, ultrasonography uh, the point which i would like to to mention at probably at uh, the end of our meeting is that many of the nephrologists now are refraining from performing the biopsies and they start uh, referring to the uh, radiology units to perform the biopsy and uh, this is very critical to our practice and i believe we should encourage and teach uh, uh, our young nephrologists to perform the biopsies uh, by ourselves. Uh, uh, if uh, no more questions, I think, yes, you can uh, 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 give a summary of something and close the, the uh, event. Uh, Dr. Tari Tantai wants to comment uh, in, the, in the last piece. Yes. Uh... السلام عليكم كل سوا طيبين مني سانكس دكتور معتز فاروق انجل بريزنتيشن اند بروفيسور سعدي فور هيز مودريشن اكشولي بروفيسور سعدي وين وي ار ريلاكتنت تو بيرفورم رينال بايوبسي اسبيشالي ان كيس ذات اور بيشنت ويل بي بي ان بينيفيتس اوف ادينج ايمونو سابريسيف دراجز وات اي مين ايزوليتد هيماتوريا مايكروسكوبيك هيماتوريا to do or not. Uh, as regard the renal biopsy and diabetic kidney disease, uh, we have dilemma, of course, uh, especially when the course of the disease is not matched with the course of diabetic nephropathy, we have to proceed with renal biopsy. Uh, but my question, Dr. Moatez, when to do uh, uh, renal biopsy for isolated microscopic uh, hematuria? Especially if you have, uh, as regards serology, IgA negative, uh, you have no markers. Uh, I think the issue will be to proceed for electro after light microscopy. You have to proceed for electro microscope. So uh, the, the nephrology uh, to proceed or not to proceed. This is what uh, my questions. Doctor, can I answer or? Uh, yes. The practice, uh, proceed. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for your question. In the practice, we wait for at least two months. Unless there is a family history, post a family history for human brain disease or so, we waste at least two months in a microscopic hematoria. Otherwise, we take a microscopic uh, core uh, because a, a light and microscopy, we usually light the microscopy. Uh, the result was no change on the light microscopy. So the, uh, the electro microscopy is then of the choice to yes. diagnose on port uh, thin membrane disease and so on. So microscopic yes. hematuria, I, 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 I instruct my patients to wait for two months. And the guidelines are uh, increasing to three months before uh, proceeding to microscopic hematuria. Unless Dr. Gamal or Dr. Yasser or the, uh, uh, another 
Uh, I believe we need we need to uh, exclude any surgical uh, cause or any tuberculosis. Uh, yes. uh, otherwise, is one of the important indications to perform the biopsy. Okay. Okay. We thank you, Gurtara, uh, for the uh, question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good you night. And, Good night. Thank you all. And before I close, uh, my last question to Mautaz said that in the lateral position, position, biopsy in the left lateral, in the lateral position, you do it in the right kidney. Is it, I'm right or correct me? Yes, yes. And right kidney, do you both right or only on the kidney? Uh, as I hear, uh, you, you, you say to answer that we, uh, I perform the left lateral to the big kidneys, yes? Biopsy lateral position, only on the right side or on left? No, it's easier on the easier on the left uh, course because uh, the spleen is under the uh, coastal margin. The, the, right, the right side, uh, yes, because there's two or three fingers of the liver below the coastal margin, so left lateral position is uh, is easier for the spleen uh, for, for, uh, because there's no spleen. But uh, hmm? you showed us a, a, a picture in uh, from the right side. So. Yes, from the right side. But uh, you are right, Dr. Yasser, uh, the easier is the other one. Because the spleen, uh, in most of cases, uh, the case with no spleen magari, is not below the coastal margin. So the kidney is uh, outside. But I, I'd like to say a point, a very, a very good point, uh, that I noticed that the bleeding from the right kidney is <laughs> less than the left because the retroperitoneal space is less because a big liver, so the liver can compress any bleeding so the right kidney, when, I, when, when I'm feeling from a bleeding kidney, I proceed with the right one, not, not the left, because the left, the left is alone, the little pretrial space, the, the bleeding may be heroic, but the right, the liver can compress uh, the bleeding. This, from my practice, it's not written in the books. Okay. Uh, no more questions and comment. Professor Gamal, excuse me to close. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Motaz, for the... <laughs> Your highly elegant demonstrative talk as, uh, as usual. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues. Thank you, Thank you very much for the... Uh... Thank you, Thank Professor you, Gamal. Thank you, Professor Gamal, for moderating this meeting and giving us. Uh, and uh, before I... Uh, before we close, كل سنة حضراتكم طيبين بمناسبة عيد الأضحى المبارك مرة تانية. Next next Wednesday uh, we will be no meetings uh, because of the Eid and we will meet inshallah uh, Wednesday 20 of July. Uh, Professor Mahmoud Omar will speak about uh, erythropoiesis stimulating agents in chronic kidney disease. See you see you later. وصباح الخير وكل سنه وحضراتكم طيبين والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته. ثانك يو سو وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله.